the bad software that he's using on a good software, but basically because some small uh, issues that I can start to seeing on the planning. And this is what exactly I would like to discuss, how we can get the most of our planning, digital planning, um, the most of our software and make sure that our surgery is accurate. Um, because one of the main reasons what we're looking to do guided surgery is to be safe, but also to be accurate on there. So what I would just like to put it here down to you is this first uh, scenario that we have here is obviously no one wants this to happen, okay? No one wants to have parallel implants, as you can see it here, but too close to each other or completely non-restorative implants or bone uh, loss after the implantation. We are not saying that the dentist here was a bad dentist or a bad surgeon. Nothing at all can happen with anyone. But how can we avoid it? Why does these kind of things happen, especially when we do guided surgery? Well, he sometimes is doing some unspoken uh, pitfalls that we have during our presentation, our uh, planning, and during our matching the STL files with the DICOM files. So, what are those unspoken mistakes? or errors that we may end up doing it without realizing that can affect so much our surgery. Well, the first thing that we have here is when we have metal scatter into our scans. What is the quality or our uh, CT scans or cone beams? How are they really nice? Are they visible? How can we make sure that we take uh, the most of our um, CT scans, our DICOM files? A lot of people, especially the salespeople from the CT scans, they say, oh, you know what, our CT scan have all these tools to remove the scattering just to make it sharp. But in fact, what we are seeing here is a mistake, a huge mistake that some, someone just took uh, this CT scan with the chrome cobalt in, inside. So it's almost unusable CT scan. But this is just to clarify what is a good CT scan. So if we are planning, uh, if we are using and analyzing a CT scan uh, for implant surgery, what we definitely should look is, can we remove any kind of material, any kind of metal or very dense uh, alloy from the patient mount before uh, taking the CBCT? Why are we saying that? Because as you can see on the images that we have at the moment, is we have metal all over the place, but by having all this metal, in fact, distort a lot of the bone region and takes away the accuracy of any planning that you may end up doing. So what we mean by removing unnecessary alloy? Obviously, dentures, we want to remove it, but can we really remove some posterior teeth that probably have a metal crown? Just pretend this the, the typical scenario. You want to place a four, a five, or a six, at the moment, the patient have their one metal crown or a bridge. Sometimes, and if you try it once or twice, uh, sometimes the patient is not to borrow. Uh, if you can remove this bridge for two or three days to take a nice CT scan, take a nice impression, and they have a clear visibility, especially if we go to our patient and say, look, we're going to remove our metal bridge or our crown just to make sure that your implant is on the best position possible. And we, we are surprised with the response of the, the, the patients. Most of them, they are prepared even to stay one week or even two weeks without that metal bridges or crowns just for the sake of having a better implant. So what we would like to talk about this, um, this uh, slides is how can we actually make our CT scan more visible? removing all the metal alloys or if you have uh, some bonded retainers there can we remove it i know that takes a little bit more time but can we remove it to avoid, avoid scatter well i think and after planning a lot of hundreds or thousands of cases i think that we can actually do it on our surgery day to day because it, if increase the accuracy of our implant if increase the predictability of our guided surgery is definitely a good protocol to go. So this is one aspect, scatter from metal artifacts. If we can avoid it, if we can reduce it, 
always is going to be nice and good. Okay, so one one unspoken uh, pitfall because a lot of companies they never mention about this subject. Another one that we really want to talk about it is we should actually have visibility of the soft issue. A lot of, again, a lot of companies that are running CT scan companies, they say, you know what, this scan is actually not too bad because we can see the density of the bone, everything is nice and clear there, so it's good, there's nothing wrong with it. So I can actually have my bone structure well visible. The question is, will the CT scan only give us the bone structures or in fact, give us as well a nice soft tissue. Some people are really surprised to understand that we can actually analyze the soft tissue, the abutment size. Some people can actually become surprised that there is much more information on a DICOM file apart from bone structures and roots and canals and other um, problems inside of the bone. So what we can do well, sometimes by changing a little bit the protocol as we taking the CT scan, give us a lot of extra information, gives us a lot of what is the thickness of our gingiva, where is end up the gingiva on a buccal region, where is the palate, where is all these nice regions. Why is so important? Well, down, uh, down the line on this webinar, we're going to talk about accuracy on how to match our STL file, the intraoral scan or the impression scan with the DICOM file. If you only have bone and no landmarks visible for eventually cases, it's virtually impossible to match it. It doesn't matter what software we're using it. So how can we make our soft tissue visible as well on a CT scan? How can we take much more of our CT scans, out of our CT scan um, protocol scans, the, instead of just adding mouse shots and terms against the palate and also on? Well, we can actually do it by using devices when we're taking our, our patients, uh, our CT scan of the patients. So we can actually use this orthodontic cheek retractor. Can you see how nice uh, this retract all the soft tissues? This device on the top images, you can see that would squish, squash the tongue on the middle of the, um, of the patient's mouth, even if the mouth is almost closed, but also would retract all the soft tissues from the buccal segment, buccal labial segments. Can you imagine the result of this CT scan now that you have all the landmarks, all the buccal fossa visible, all the buccal, all the gingiva there? So this is very important to do it. Can we do it? Well, those cheek retractors or these obturators, they are quite available on the market. But if you cannot get hold of them, what we can do? Well, the important bit here, we want to separate the post jaws. We want to make sure the metal artifacts, the scatter from both jaws, they are not visible. So on those two images, that we ask the patient to bite on anything that is not radio pack, cotton rolls, wooden sticks. But as you can see, most of, more and more scanners, they have the biting jig instead of the chin rest. This makes the jaws separated. But we probably can actually use cotton rolls to separate our gingiva to our buckle, uh, to our lips, to our cheeks as well, the patient cheeks. So can you imagine how would your CT scan would look like if you have everything retracted, would look like, like this, okay? Completely visible. So you have the soft palate there, even visible. You have the buckle area, the labia. Okay, everybody, okay, everybody apologies, apologies for that apologies. Uh, loss of uh, connection there. He goes back up and running, he's just gonna carry on. Sorry guys. Uh, you know, internet is, is good, <laughs> it's good surprises. So uh, hopefully you managed to saw my previous slides uh, just to mention that we have a very nice canvas here. So we should really changing the protocol of our scanning uh, to get the most out of it, okay? So now the not important bit, when we designing our guides, it's really important to have the two pieces of data corrected, not only the, um, 
uh, the STL, the, the cities can file the convene and we spend all this time putting pot on rolls and make sure that it's retracted. But we also need to make sure that everything together, the intro roll scan or the model that we have match nicely together with the DICOM file. And unfortunately, I don't understand why the, all the industry of guided surgery, they always promote that automatically matching is perfect. But you know what? My experience with all of the softwares, the automatic matching is not the ideal matching. There is nothing better than our human eyes to match. Why are we saying that? Well, because exactly what we are showing on these slides, the full arch is better to match, but it cannot be achieved completely matching uh, just by using the teeth. In most of the softwares, they use all the teeth to make sure that the matching between the STL file and the DICOM file is perfect. I must say, there is a lot of studies done on New Zealand University and Barcelona University saying that teeth is good for a good referencing, but is not the perfect matching on a patient's mouth. It may come as a surprise for a lot of the attendees here, but you know what? It's quite important to understand that what makes things very nice and shiny on a DICOM file creates a little bit of scatter. So what I'm showing here on this slide is, as you can see, the teeth outline on the, on the pink line is the outline of the actual patient's teeth size. And as you can see from the DICOM file, the teeth on a DICOM file are always slightly bigger because the amount of scatter created by a the enamel. So the enamel makes very clear, very shiny on a DICOM file. But if you really truly want to have something nice and accurate, you're going to realize that enamel creates the teeth visible on a DICOM file slightly bigger than the actual patient's mouth. So you can imagine, you need to select, if you just only use teeth to match your cases, you need to select what margins are you going to use? Where is the compensation between the oversized CT scan and the actual patient mouse CT scan? So if this is good for we to referencing and to more or less see where are on a good position, what is on a patient's mouth that is really not scattered at all and give us the good matching reference is the soft tissues. So if, as you can see on this image here, the palate, the buccal segment, if we had the cotton rolls there, would give you a very nice demarked line where is the perfect matching happen. So if we want to make sure that our surgery is really a good surgery with a nice matching, with a perfect and accurate matching, we should use the soft tissue functionalities. As you can see on this image, this model is perfect aligned. But can you see how the outline of the teeth, because of the different amounts of enamel or composite or whatever we have there, they are not fully match on there. So what I would urge for everyone to think, let's say out of the box is don't trust your teeth on the DICOM file to match your STL file to match perfect. Would never happen on any of the softwares. Just let's try to use as much of the soft tissue as possible to make sure that we have a perfect and accurate matching. Because the worst case scenario is you would have your surgery, your guide there, you place your implant and you realize that your implant is half a millimeter or one millimeter above where you should go or below the line that you would like to go. So this is the most important bit that we are looking for. So our target is this versus soft tissues. Can we use soft tissue? Well, even in dangerous cases, even when you don't have any teeth too much to, mar to merge your STL file, you can now take impression, scan this impression, get a nice model, and you still have a perfect matching surface to be able to use it. So in dangerous, that is quite difficult to do guided surgery on there to match everything because intro scans, they don't catch it or we don't have where to match it. Now you know how to do it. Now you, we can think out of the box, open the patient mouth, keep the jaw separated, keep the cotton rolls or the cheek retracted and you would have a very nice matching. So this is exactly the example that we would like to have. 
Never rely on auto tools. Never trust that the automatic matching from your software is good, is better than your eyes. They are not. Doesn't matter what small, if it's small or if there is any other software on the market. Now, what we would like to discuss on the latest is, is exactly that is for you to be able to match DICOM files and STL files, you need to have a good models. So if you don't have the internal scan to be able to match it, what you need to do is you need to take a good impression. So if you don't have a good soft tissue, if you have double impressions, if you have missing mucosa bits, if you have drugs on your impression, if you don't capture the impression completely to the distal of your teeth, wrong size of the trays, using upper trays on a lower jaws, well, it may do the job, but surely is not gonna allow you to get a nice and accurate models on there, okay? So you need to have two pieces of accurate um, data. You need to have a good DICOM file that now we learn that we can use cities, uh, cotton rolls and all these things, but we also need to have a good impression. Light and soft body, or if you can cast it straight away, alginate, but please just capture all this soft tissue to be able to match it with your DICOM file. If you take intraoral scans, again, taking an intraoral scan for uh, liners that you just only need the teeth around is not the same as taking for surgical guides. We cannot have missing cause of it. We, can, we should not have like bubbles if you scan a plaster model. We should have the full palette to be able to match it. If we don't have a good model, this is what is going to end up. Your guide, doesn't matter how good it is, doesn't matter what software it does, your guide is not going to sit. If your guide is not going to sit, your implant is not going to be, no, it's not going to end up where you did plan. So some clinicians come to me and some surgeons say to me, look, my, I did plan everything right, my implant now is angulated out or is misplaced. Why is that? Well, probably because the guy didn't fit completely on the teeth. And sometimes the reason is not the clinician, is not the software, but is the misfitting of the kind. Okay, so what we would like to, to have if you have an intraoral scan is something like that. The full mucosa captured, the full buccal lingual, so we have a lot of too much and we'll be able to plan it. So just reaching to the end of my uh, presentation, hopefully what uh, I discuss for some of you is quite clear, for some it, it may uh, help us to um, think a little bit more about how to get the most of our uh, cases, our planning for the surgical guide. I would like to just share with you this very simple case, but I think that is beautiful, that you can have all the data and you can do immediate loading, having the bridge and everything ready before your surgery. This is a courtesy uh, from the Dr. Beat Kurtz. He did a guide surgery with a nice and accurate data. For example, this patient is missing posterior and this central is uh, failing out. So these tooth, they need to be replaced. So how we did it? So we scan everything. We got a very nice CT scan, as you can see there, with all the soft tissue visible. We took from the intraoral scan a PLY that we merged with our software. We just had the occlusion model there and we translate everything into exocad or three shape software, in this case was Exocant, and we designed a beautiful crowns uh, anatomic correctly. Then we got this wax up, we brought it together to our planning. And now, as you can see here, everything match so nice. So you know that your guide is gonna be nice and accurate. Once we have all these implants placed, once we have everything related with the wax up that we did, once we know that they are prosthetically friendly inside of the prosthetic envelope, now what we can do, we can export the model with the scan abutments. As soon as you export this model in STL format, because the scan bodies tell you how deep is the implant, what is the internal X of the implant, what is the final position of the implant, you can import that data all inside of ExoCAD or 3Shape or any other software to design your crowns. So you don't need to have impressions, you don't need to have models, you don't need to have nothing to disturb your, your patient. You just have one appointment on there. Now you bring again the wax up that you designed previously, we designed the analog model with everything there and we can actually print our model on there and we can test our 
prosthesis if they look good if they are okay or if they, if they need to be adjusted okay so this is what we do now we have the crowns made before the surgery we have our guides and even some of the systems allow you to have these small notches that tells you what is the internal x of these implants you have you can test the guided kit if they are okay for your surgery and you can start with the surgeon extract the central place the guide start to drilling and then, as you can see it's a full guided where is even the implants would be placed through the guide and this is quite important because if you drill everything through the guide but you don't place the implant through the guides the implant will always drift or um, navigate to where the bone is less dense so it's quite difficult to get everything predicted if the implant doesn't go through the guide when it's obviously impossible so we place the implant through the guide on posterior and now we go for the anterior and this is everyone understand it's a quite difficult surgery because we have an open socket there so the the drill can drift to whatever the position so the implant is also placed through the guide and as you can see now you have a nice and accurate implant inside where you have now to screw uh, the prosthesis and everything is nice in place to be able to put the bone graft to place the membrane on top and suture everything so this is how we end up with implants parallel nicely and accurate exactly what we want plans the abutments and we end up with a good patient experience safety first keep it simple accurate and predictable and this is exactly what we do okay so this is what i would like to share with you with everyone and hopefully you enjoy um and chris down to you if anyone would like to put some questions happy to answer <laughs>